Hello. Um, so this is going to be a, a short talk. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll go for about 15 minutes, uh, giving you a little introduction to FSTAR. And then Catalin will give you a demo for the remaining 15 minutes. Uh, FSTAR is joint work with lots of people um, at several organizations. Uh, so what is FSTAR? It's a, it's a framework for verifying ML-like programs. So by which I mean higher order, effectful, call by value. Um, it's you, at, a, at, a, at one level of abstraction, you can think of F star as being um, like F omega, but we add dependent types to it, and we also add effects to it. And it's very customizable. Uh, so most things are not baked into the semantics, but uh, provided by um, uh, libraries that, for example, give semantics to how the effects work. Or, uh, you know, give semantics to the way uh, the, the, the heap of the program is set up. And so the user gets to change these things uh, subject to some proof obligations um, when they try to verify their program. Uh, we've been working on FSTAR and languages like it for some time now. And um, a few days before ICFP started, we released FSTAR 0.9.0. So we're inching our way towards 1.0. And um, this new version of FSTAR is um, a kind of a complete redesign uh, and an improvement over the prior versions uh, based on a more expressive um, uh, calculus and also a more uh, stripped down uh, implementation that also bootstraps, actually. Uh, to give you a sense of where FSTAR fits in the landscape of program verification tools, one way in which I think about it is that there are many semi-automated uh, verification tools for first-order programming languages. I think of tools based on um, uh, the Y3 uh, uh, framework or Boogie and so on. There are languages like Daphne and uh, um, VCC and so on that provide relatively simple uh, program logics, but uh, they have effects. The, la programs have program, uh, the, the programming languages have effects inherently in them, and you get fairly good automation via SMT solvers. Uh, for programs written in those, uh, in those languages. At the other end of the spectrum, you have interactive proof assistants like COC, uh, where the expressiveness of the logic is almost arbitrary, and you have great control via uh, uh, tactic languages and so on. But automation is somewhat lacking, and uh, if you want to do effectful programming, uh, then um, uh, you have to do so via some encodings, usually. And FSTAR tries to span this divide. So we are a higher order programming language with primitive effects rather than encoded effects. But we have SMT solving and, and a rich assertion logic based on a um, higher order dependently type uh, uh, language. And you can use the SMT solver to uh, automatically try to prove many large boring proofs. But um, because the, lo the logic is so expressive, the SMT solver may not be able to handle some goals. And when that happens, you can always fall back on F star as a dependently type language and provide a proof term yourself. Um, uh, at the moment, if you want to do this, you really have to provide the proof term. Uh, we don't have a tactic language, uh, and that's something that well, we, might, uh, we might change in the, uh, maybe as we go towards this 1.0. Uh, and it's F star. The most recent version is open source. It's on GitHub. It's written in F star and bootstraps into F sharp and OCaml. And we have binary packages for most platforms. And also um, an OPAM package, which uh, should work, but currently has some issues. So uh, maybe it'll work by the end of the day. Uh, so what is, um, um, uh, in the next couple of slides, I'll give you a flavor of what some very simple F star expressions look like and the types that you give to them. Uh, the basic idea is that F star has a, has a type and effect system where um, the for, for expressions like this, say 1 plus 1, um, what happens is that we, we infer that it's a total expression. Uh, the tot is the effect label, and int is the result type. Uh, so for unconditionally pure things, by which I mean pure and uh, like, uh, terminating, the effect label is tot. But you can also uh, describe things like conditional purity. So here's factorial. Uh, and you can think of factorial implemented in its, in its uh, standard way with a with letterec. Um, and here, factorial, what we can say about it is that it's a, it's a pure expression. Uh, it returns an int, provided you can prove that uh, x is greater than or equal to 0. And if you can prove that, then uh, it, it, uh, what, what you can conclude is that um, the result of factorial, x, factorial applied to x, is, um, is a value y that satisfies this formula, that y is also greater than or equal to 0. So uh, these are 
that's our effect label, that's the result type, and um, the effects are actually indexed effects, so they can be indexed by um, actually arbitrarily many uh, uh, formulae or uh, types or terms uh, depending on the definition of that effect. So in the case of pure, there, there, there are, there's one result type and, and two indices. Uh, F-star also has refinement types, where refinement types come with a subtyping relation. So uh, you can define NAT, for example, as a refinement of int, uh, particularly those ints uh, that satisfy this formula, that is that they're greater than or equal to zero. And via refinement subtyping, if I apply factorial to one, well, uh, just substituting x, uh, one for x in this, uh, in the previous line, I get that it's a, a pure int that requires that one is greater than or equal to zero. And via refinement subtyping, I can prove that that precondition is valid, and then conclude that it's unconditionally pure, and give it the type tote nat, which also captures that the result is greater than or equal to zero. So it's not just pure things. Uh, you can you have other effects, of course. So um, uh, st is one such effect. So if I assign 17 to x, one thing I can uh, one uh, depending on how I configure f stars st monad, one. Uh, property that I can describe about this, this uh, expression here is that it's a computation in the ST monad. It returns unit, and it's indexed by a precondition and a postcondition. The precondition is a predicate on the input state, and here I say um, the predicate is that, um, the, the precondition is that the reference actually has to exist in the input state, so the heap must contain X. And as a postcondition, the postcondition is, is a relation between the initial heap, the result, and the final heap. It's this three-place relation. And in this case, um, the result is uninteresting because it's just a unit. Um, but what I can say is that the new heap is um, the update of the old heap at the point x, at the reference x with the value 17. And it's not just, uh, you know, um, uh, well, uh, beyond ST, uh, we have other effects like exceptions and uh, divergence and uh, IO and, uh, and so on. Um, all the effects in F star are arranged in a, in a, in a semi-lattice, where at the bottom of the semi-lattice is pure, and this stands for uh, uh, pure uh, total uh, terminating computations, possibly conditionally pure. And at the top, uh, we have all, where all corresponds to all the primitive effects of the language, so uh, tradition, all the primitive effects that you would expect in, uh, in, in ML, say. Um, uh, these two points of the lattice are fixed, but in the middle, the user gets to carve up the effects and refine them as they like. So here I've shown one instantiation where the user chose to, chose to split uh, divergence, exceptions, and state into three separate effects and gave a power set lattice over these effects. And uh, associated with each effect is a, um, is a monad of predicate transformers that gives a semantics to how that effect behaves. Uh, and between two of any two effects, and, um, uh, if there is an edge, that edge represents a monad morphism lifting the semantics of one predicate transformer to the other. Uh, and the requirement is that these are indeed uh, monad morphisms so that uh, uh, you get the expected um, commutations. F star has a call by value semantics, uh, uh, like I said earlier, I think. And, um, what this means is that the way we set up the language, um, the monads only appear in, sp in, in, in particular positions, that is, they appear to the right of every arrow. And uh, a monad like this, M, has one result type and arbitrarily many indices, de depending on the definition of, uh, of the index, uh, of the monad. And to make this more palatable to work with uh, in the, uh, and to interoperate with ML, we have several shorthands, and one such shorthand is, is a shorthand to let you write ML-ish arrows. So if you write the normal, the, this kind of a, a, an arrow type, missing, uh, omitting the monads, it's just sugar for, um, uh, we uh, provide sugar for currying, so the intermediate arrows are all total arrows, and the final arrow is ML, uh, which is our abbreviation for the all monad without any pre and post conditions, uh, but with all possible effects, which is uh, kind of what the ML arrow really is. So usually you don't ever write this ML effect. It's just usually implicit when you write a normal arrow type in, in F star. So when you write an F star program, like say factorial, and you claim that it has a type, say nat arrow tote nat, uh, what F star does is in, in, uh, in, a, in a context gamma, which may define uh, F, the F star prelude, it builds a typing derivation for uh, factorial at this type. 
And in the process of building such a derivation, it also produces a verification condition phi, which is a logical formula. And the way you should read this judgment is that if the formula phi is valid in the context gamma, then it's sound to view factorial at the type that you have here. So when, once you get this VC out, this verification condition out, we feed this to, uh, to Z3, which is the SMT solver that we typically use. And uh, an interesting thing is that this formula of phi is a formula in a higher order dependently type logic, whereas um, Z3 is a, is a first order logic. And one of the uh, main interesting bits in the way F star works is this encoding of this dependently type logic into a first order logic. And the, and the encoding is, um, well, it's, it's not complete, but uh, uh, if, the, uh, if the solver is able to solve it, uh, uh, you're happy. If the solver fails, you're less happy. Um, and in, in, prior, in other tools, including prior versions of F star, if the solver failed, you were, uh, you know, you were sort of stuck. Uh, and you, could ask the, you could try to coax the solver to succeed by giving it more and more hints, but this gets kind of frustrating. Um, but in this version of F star, we're expressive enough that we have inside F star a, um, a, a, a this, this pure language, which is this dependently type core, which represents, uh, uh, which is a logic in its own right, and you can write proof terms and specs in, in, that, in that fragment. So if the, sol if the solver can't do it, you at least have a way to do it yourself. And that was a big motivation for this new design. And once you've checked your program, uh, you can either compile to OCaml or F sharp for execution. And uh, for the, uh, well, I'm going to, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to tell you a bit more, focus a bit more about this, this extraction bit to OCaml and F sharp. So what have we used this new version of F star for? Um, well, so far we have about, um, uh, it's been about a year since we've started developing and using this new version. We have about 45,000 lines of verified code in our test suite. The examples kind of fall into three buckets. We use F star as a proof assistant, uh, where we formalize micro F star, a subset of F star in F star, and conduct its meta theory uh, uh, in F star. Uh, recently, we've been uh, doing several DSLs embedded in F star with, um, a, uh, for example, one of them is uh, trying to do safe region-based memory management inside F star where you have uh, proof obligations that say, um, you know, if you dereference a pointer, a, a, re a reference, you have to prove that the region into which that reference points is still live. Um, and when you compile the program, it's compiled to OCaml, but links with a library that uh, we've been working on that provides region-based memory management uh, in, in OCaml, and you can call into this thing via the OCaml uh, FFI. Uh, we've also, traditionally, we, we've been using FSTAR for verifying crypto protocols, and we continue to do that. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the main ongoing efforts is uh, to build a verified implementation of uh, TLS 1.3. And uh, TLS is the protocol underlying uh, things like SSL. Uh, there's plenty of online material. Uh, on, we've taught several courses on it, and most of the course material is online. Uh, we're teaching uh, a tutorial tomorrow morning, a uh, uh, four-hour tutorial at, at CUFP. So if, you have, uh, if you're interested and uh, you want to spend four hours on F-Star, then uh, come along tomorrow. Uh, we also have some T-shirts. So Catalin and I are wearing these T-shirts, and there are some more of them in the back of the room there. So help yourselves if you're interested. Right, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, sketch how you use F-Star with F-Sharp and OCaml. Uh, I'll, it's, I'll keep it fairly high level, and then uh, Catalin will show you um, uh, several uh, verified F-star programs. So the way in which, one way in which I think you could use F-star is in this mode where you kind of gradually verify an existing ML program. So say you have an ML program, it's got a bunch of modules in it, and you identify one module that you think is of, of interest and you want to verify this module. Uh, what you do first is you, you can pull that module out and migrate it to F-star. What does it mean to migrate to F star? Well, F star uh, is a, um, is a, it handles a subset of, uh, uh, in fact, there is a subset of F star that, that uh, overlaps with a subset of F sharp. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, so it has no objects and it has no functors. Um, uh, and its notation is a bit different from OCaml's. The, the main difference being that we write, uh, you know, list of int rather than int list. And uh, so, uh, so in, if you migrate from ML, you may have to, you may have to uh, switch this around. Um, but uh, 
For F# -sharp users, we also support this angle brackets notation. So you can write list of int and actually be in the subset that is simultaneously F# -sharp and F# star. Uh, in fact, when we bootstrap our compiler, this is what we did. We, we started out being in this shared subset of F# star and F# -sharp by using this kind of notation, the angle brackets notation. Uh, once you migrate, then uh, you can uh, ask F# star to verify this module that you're working on. And the verification can produce, pr proceed in several steps. So uh, for starters, you may just be interested in, in reasoning about FX. So you can uh, start to, uh, you can have F star infer FX for your programs and check that they're, they're the effects that you expect and say nothing else about these programs. Uh, uh, and that's kind of uh, an initial sanity check, perhaps. Uh, then you can start to add simple data refinements. Uh, you can say, uh, for instance, you may be interested in um, proving that you don't divide by zero or uh, your array indices are within bounds or exhaustiveness of patterns and so on. And all of these things in the limit, uh, in order to prove any of these properties, may, you may eventually have to prove functional correctness. But for many common cases, uh, you may be able to get away with uh, uh, just simple invariance. Uh, then you can sort of specify more invariants and maybe go to the style where you have a rich stateful invariants that, that speak uh, um, about precise uh, functional correctness properties, and if you if you if you really if you're really brave, you can even go one step further. And F star has a relational mode where you can uh, uh, prove properties about multiple programs. So you can say, take a program, you can optimize it, and then prove that the optimized version is in fact uh, implements the same function as the original one uh, using our relational uh, mode. Uh, and you can also do this for security properties. So you can prove things like non-interference by saying. If you have a program and you reason about two runs of it that differ arbitrarily on the secrets, you can prove that the, the results are low equivalent, for instance. Um, uh, once you've done that, you can uh, extract to OCaml by passing it this flag, code gen OCaml. And what this will produce is um, uh, an OCaml variant of your program where essentially what this does is it, era it does a, a, a few things. So, so it erases uh, uh, ghost code in your program. So um, uh, five minutes towards half an hour? Yes, OK. Uh, um, and, uh, 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 and it actually inserts a coercion. So, so a, a well-typed F-star program is not necessarily a well-typed OCaml program. Uh, so uh, it inserts uh, magic in various places to uh, get a typed uh, ML program as it must because uh, the type system is more expressive. So this is much like what Koch does when you extract to a camel. Uh, and then uh, when you, um, then you want to interoperate with the rest of your ML program. And a useful discipline is that at the boundaries uh, between your program and the rest of the, rest of the, uh, rest of the original program, you should expect to have just simple types. Like uh, the erasure of an F star program to an ML uh, program at the boundary should be the identity. Now, um, if it's not the identity, you can insert, uh, it's up to the programmer to manage this, but you can insert uh, verified wrappers to ensure that it establishes the invariance that you care about. But this is not always possible because in F star's type system, you can express things that cannot be checked with a runtime check. For example, here's uh, sort with, uh, where it expects its second argument to be a total order, where you can't really check this uh, with, a, with a wrapper. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, you can do the same thing with, uh, with, uh, with F sharp, oh, that should say code gen F sharp, sorry. There's a different flag. If you say a different flag, you get F sharp instead. Um, so I don't know if I have time, but. Yeah. I'll, show you, I'll show you some simple um, start programs um, and the various editor support we have. Um, so this is binary search trees implemented as if you would uh, implement it in, uh, in ML. You, d you define an uh, algebraic data type and you define uh, your functions by pattern matching and, um, and recursion. So nothing, nothing uh, fancy so far, just that I can have a variant of this in which um, I prove much stronger type for this. In particular, I prove that, in, uh, that search and insert in a binary search trees are, are total. Um, and that, well, um, if the tree you pass in um, is a binary search tree, uh, then search indeed only returns true when the, when, the, uh, when the element is in the tree. And this in tree is really just another 
total function defined, like bo total Boolean function defined above. Um, and there is, a, there is a decreases clause here, which is actually, in this case, is not which says that this function is, um, is terminating because in each call um, to search, uh, the tree structurally decreases. Now, in this case, I don't even need to write this. Um, actually, F star um, uses a lexicographic ordering over X and T as the default, uh, as the default ordering to prove termination, which, which in this case also works. So, uh, and if you try to write just X, then F star will complain saying that well, giving you an error message that doesn't fit on screen but at, at this resolution, but saying that, well, basically, x is not strictly smaller than x. Um, um, something else, we also have an online editor. So if you want to try out F star um, online, there is an online tutorial, which, um, somewhere here, which has this, uh, this editor embedded. So you can load exercises in this editor um, by clicking here, and um, and it can check your programs. So, so, so basically, you don't even need to install anything. Um, um, and another thing um, I want to show you quickly uh, is that we can actually do proofs in a star. There are some cock people in the room, so. Um, Okay, maybe I should mention the first kind of proof. So, so F star supports various kinds of proofs. Um, the, proof I, the proof I showed in search uh, was some sort of intrinsic proof when defining search and insert uh, at definition time. I was also proving some properties of them. And in this case, well, I was proving almost all properties there, is to, there, there are to, to prove. But very often, say you, you have the sorting example in the other buffer. Um, um, in this case, we, we also use uh, properties, uh, we also prove properties after the fact. So in this case, the, this, is, uh, this is a definition of quicksort uh, proved. Um, and one of the main lemmas about it uh, is this. Well, it looks a bit monstrous, but this is the main invariant uh, in, uh, in quicksort. In particular, it, it tells you that, uh, it tells you something about append and, uh, and the way the, the pivot is selected and things like this. So in a way, this is not a generic property of append. You wouldn't want to, to prove this when you define append. Well, it, it, it seems completely silly. So you can prove this lemma after the fact, given that append is pure. Um, and then, using this SMT pattern, we more or less tell the SMT solver that, well, you can use this lemma um, whenever you see a, a term of this, of this form. Um, and this is, this, this is enough, actually. This kind of hint is enough to prove um, the, the quicksort correctness. Now, so these are already two, way, two, two ways to prove things in F star. Well, there is a third one, and this is like, purely constructive uh, building proof terms like in Coq. So for this, I'm, I'll, I'll show you the third editor, uh, which is a mode for Atom. Um, and basically, you can, you can do proof general kind of, so you can, you can ask it to, to there is this little thing moving back and forth, which allows you to check incrementally your 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 proofs. Uh, and here I, I give a, I, I give a constructive preservation proof for a simplified lambda calculus in I don't know 200 lines of code. All right, thank you,
Um, so if you, if you don't write any uh, quantifiers in your program yourself, so, uh, so you don't have any quantified assumptions in your context, then uh, FSTAR takes some pains to ensure that uh, uh, anything that it encodes the SMT solver, uh, it, while it may contain quantifiers, the quantifiers are guarded suitably th so that it, uh, the user should not have to think about this. Uh, now, uh, typically, you want to write some quantifiers yourself. Uh, and once you do, then uh, that, that becomes more advanced. And you need to think, you need to understand how the SMT solver works. Um, some data points in this is uh, we've had a couple of examples of, of people going off and uh, just using FSTAR without telling any of us about it. And, uh, and then coming back with uh, you know, 5,000 line completed developments that prove interesting things. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a great thing. Yeah. So, um, I mean, some guy proved a, a, uh, a compiler from uh, uh, s classical circuits to quantum circuits and proved them reversible um, and, uh, comp and was able to do it himself. Uh, uh, I mean, he was pro probably also a very good uh, uh, verification <laughs> guy to start with. But, but uh, it, um, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't have a conclusive answer, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, we also have a, a fairly large and quite het heterogeneous teams, team, uh, including security people who, who had to learn this new version and, and, and use it. We, we've t taught this a tutorial to, to people. So, I mean, to some extent it works. Now, you, there are cor if you reach corner cases in which um, things don't work, then, then we would like to hear about them and try to improve things. V very often it, it has to do with uh, quantifiers. So like this lemma, I, like, I don't remember which one it says. Yeah, like when you do, think, the, when you do things like this, that, the then, then it's complete, you can completely screw up. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but uh, it's an exciting talk. We are running out.